Uh, welcome back subscribers. I'm glad that you've uh, rejoined my series on introductory economics and today we're looking at factors of production. So factors of production are otherwise known as resources and sometimes I like to simply abbreviate factors of production simply to FOPS, F-O-P-S, just for speed and, and uh, swiftness. Although I wouldn't recommend you do that in the exam, you write that out in full, the factors of production. So what are these things that economists refer to as the factors of production? Well, they are, ladies and gentlemen, capital, enterprise, land and labour. And just before I get into what each of those things are very briefly, let me just point out to you the strategic way in which I have identified those. We have capital, enterprise, land and labour. Put those all together, ladies and gentlemen, what do we spell out? We spell out the word sell. So if you want to remember your factors of production, just remember that word sell. And hopefully you'll not go too far wrong. So what exactly are these uh, constituent components, these factors of production? So capital. Capital, ladies and gentlemen, really is another word for machinery. And so the capital equipment that we might be referring to, in this sense, and anyway, in terms of factors of production, when we're referring to capital, we mean machinery. Machinery that's used to build other things and other goods and services. To, so capital equipment might be used to produce lots of consumer goods, for example. What we do not mean in this instance, we do not mean capital as in money, which can then be invested into a bank or into stocks and shares or into exchange rates or uh, foreign currency, whatever it might be. So that's not what we mean. We simply mean machinery. Enterprise. So by enterprise, we mean, and I'm sure you've heard of this word before, we talk about the entrepreneur. Difficult word to spell, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you get that right, entrepreneur. And the entrepreneur is somebody with an idea, somebody who can maybe not do, not do everything, but they have the idea and the wherewithal which enables them to get the right capital together, get the right land together, get the right labor together, put that all together and come up with a tremendous business idea. So those of you who watch The Dragon's Den, for example, uh, Peter Jones, Theopathetus, uh, and all of the dragons, you'll be aware that they are all very successful entrepreneurs worth many tens of millions of pounds in their own right. And they're very successful. And so you'll see on the dragon's den as well that when people come and ask the, entre the entrepreneurs, the, the dragons for money, well, that's a risky. And so entrepreneurs are taking a risk as well. So you've got to be a bit of a risk taker to be an entrepreneur because not only might you make lots of profit, but you also might make significant losses as well. So you've got to be able to take the rough with the smooth in that respect. Land. So land's a funny one. Land you think of, well, you know, it's what I'm standing on. But by land and economics, we mean natural resources. Natural resources. So oil, gas, etc., etc. All of these things actually, ladies and gentlemen, which we would also refer to in economics as being non-renewable or having a kind of finite lifetime. They will run out at some point unless we keep being able to discover uh, new reserves of them, which is pretty unlikely, one would think. So that's what we mean by land. And then finally, ladies and gentlemen, the, probably the most obvious one is labor. So that's human effort, that's your effort and my effort, and that can be both physical and mental. So you might be somebody, for example, who sits at a desk all day crunching numbers, uh, being a statistician or, or um, what, you know, some sort of um, statistics guru. Uh, and so you're doing all of your work mentally, whereas you might be somebody who works on a building site or you might be a joiner or a plumber, and so your labor is more physical in that respect. But nonetheless, in terms of labor, we're talking about the workers, the number of workers in the economy. And of course, you'll know at the moment, obviously, this is a difficult time for workers 
as we are in the midst of a furlough scheme which is running out and beginning to run out as we move towards the end of September, beginning of October. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the factors of production. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button and hit the notifications bell so that you get all of my latest updates. Bye for now.